Welcome to the cult. This is part two of our Sisters of Battle tutorial. In part one, we painted the black armor. So in this second part, we're gonna paint all the other details. Everything we're doing today is designed to be a simple process, but have a really great impact, whether it's on the tabletop or just in your display cabinet. I base coated every part of the cloth with Gal Vorbach red, and that forms a really nice dark shadow. Then we're going to be painting the first highlight, which is with corn red, and this will form the mid-tone for our cloth. I want to paint every part of the cloth that faces upwards, because that will leave behind the Galvor back as the shadow on all the parts facing down. And then we can build the finer highlights on top of that. Corn red is a nice opaque paint but I'm still gonna take two or three coats to build up a really smooth foundation. Now for the next highlight, I'm gonna make a mix and that's going to be by adding vermilion into the corn red. And on these highlights, I'm gonna be covering a smaller area. And I'm just gonna be hitting all of the edges and bringing out the extreme parts of the cloth. You'll notice here as well how I actually paint a highlight that runs right next to the shadow. And these highlights will flow into each other. So when I start the part above, I'll just highlight along the edge and you'll see how it meets the other highlights from below. If you look at some references of cloth, you'll notice how there's not really an interruption of the highlight unless there's a really strong fold. Then I'm gonna continue doing the same thing, but this is going to be with pure vermilion. And we're just building up a nice strong red now. So showing you the other side of it. Just building up that strong red color. And again, this highlight runs right next to the shadow as this is where it comes into the light. Now for the bright highlights, I'm going to add a little white into the vermilion. You can use any color to brighten this to taste. And this again, I'm gonna be working in a smaller area and just building up the strength of the color. You can see I'm using the tip of the brush now and my brush stroke direction is just flowing with the cloak. Now I'm going to apply a glaze of vermilion and this will bring back the strength and the vibrancy of the red back. So if you feel like it goes too pink, then definitely do this step. So you can see I'm going to apply on the back here, the glaze all over and that just brings that intense red back. You can see the difference it makes just with one coat and I'll keep doing that until I like the look of it. For the metallic sections, I base coated everything with Games Workshop Iron Warriors. I really like this addition to the line as it's a really dark, nice silver to start with. But what I'm gonna do here is add glazes of matte black to increase the shadows. So if you take note of my brush stroke direction, it's always moving up and that's gonna gradually build up a shade. It's also gonna make the shadows matte and that will give a more realistic appearance to the metal. You can see on the other side where I've built it up and adding more coats, gradually you get this really nice dark shadow in your metal. And you do need to take your time with this, but it's worth it as it's really effective for any kind of metallics. Then we're gonna finish the silvers just with a highlight of lead belcher and we've made it quite dark now, so lead belcher actually forms quite a nice highlight. I use the side of the brush where I can on these large parts, but then I have to use the tip of the brush where I can't quite get in there. Just try and do this as neat as possible and also bring a little bit of light to the bottom of these exhausts. And I'm also gonna pick out any of the rivets and other little details. For the lenses, I've base coated them with Vallejo Black Green. And then the first highlight is going to be with Deep Green. 
Then the second highlight, I'm gonna mix in some Escorpina green to the deep green. I love this color for doing lenses because it's really opaque. And when you're doing a really fine detail like this, you want that control and to be able to do it, you know, first time. Then the brightest green we're gonna apply for the final highlight is gonna be the Escorpina green. I did not enjoy filming this. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it that I can do this. But uh, yeah, it was quite tricky to film. <laughs> and then we have the horrible white dot, which I managed to do first time on one side, but what about the other side? So I did it okay, and then uh, I've ruined it. So if you make a mistake with this white dot, which I've done here, I'm just gonna take the black green again and just correct that. What I should have said was I made it too big on purpose to show you how to make these fixes, but there you go. So we're gonna move on to doing the white, which is quite notorious for being difficult, but I do find using this Vallejo pale blue as a base coat, that it's not so bad. This is the first coat here and you can see it's quite wishy-washy, but after just two coats, I do get a really nice solid foundation. So with just two coats, it's looking pretty smooth. And now I'm gonna apply a highlight, which is the pale blue with some white added to it. And I'm gonna focus my highlights on just one side of the mask, as one side is facing away, and that'll be a really effective look, having one side in shadow. So you can see I'm just focusing on one side where you have that line down the center to divide the two parts. And I will do an edge highlight on the bottom here with this color. And I found that this actually took three coats to build up a nice opaque color on one side. But this resulted in a really nice smooth looking white. Then on the shadow side, I use this mix to do the edge highlights. You could edge highlight this pure white, but this is probably light enough. And then finally on the light side, I use pure white from Vallejo, which I find is the smoothest I've used. And I'm just gonna hit a highlight at the top, and then also the edges, but only the edges facing up so not the edge above the lens, just the one below. And I'm getting that corner there, just bringing up the power of the white. And as we look at it now, you can see leaving that one side in shadow is really effective. I've base coated all of the coppery parts in decayed metal from Scale 75. I love this paint for any kind of gold or brass because it's super dark and smooth. Then the first highlight is going to be a mix of that plus the copper. And I'm trying to paint a highlight shape that matches these spheres. So it's a circular shape at the top and then I have a little line highlight along the bottom to make a reflection. Then the last step is going to be some pure copper and that's just going to cover a smaller area. You could also use Games Workshop Hashet copper. They're very similar, but I really like these dark star metallics. So again, on the other side, just adding a small circular highlight. And I'll also use this color to pick out all of the other details like this skull here and all the little rivets and stuff. And there you go. To finish these metallics, I'm gonna do a verdigris effect and I'm just gonna dilute some turquoise paint so it's a very thin glaze. And I'm carefully running this into the recesses. And this actually helps to bring back a lot of definition uh, if you've made some mistakes with the metallics. So for the leather parts, I'm using Scale 75 black leather. And this is a really desaturated dark purple 
and it works really well with the rest of the color scheme. For the highlights, I just added a little of the pale blue that we used for the white helmet. And I'm trying to be subtle with this and just add a small amount and just do some soft highlights just around the top here. So there you have it, one finished Sister of Battle. We'd love to know what you'd like to see in our future tutorials, so please leave a comment below. And if you've liked this video today, then please hit that subscribe button so you can see future updates from us. Until the next one, see you then.